um thank you everybody for subscribing to my channel and thanks for your support your lovely comment thank you very much i appreciate it thanks a lot guys i have a tutorial for you today it's a dress a gutter dress i'm going to be leaving the picture uh, the picture is probably going to be part of the thumbnail so you are going to be seeing the picture and when i finish the dress i will take a picture as well and show you guys so i'm going to quickly show you the fabric we are going to be using and every other thing that we'll be needing all right guys thanks so this is what we are going to be using for this dress i'm only going to be lining the top section the bodice of the dress so this is the poly cutting um, fabric and this is the main fabric that we're going to be using it's very lovely royal blue african print fabric and don't forget guys to check our website we got um new fabrics in I uh, was still trying to put them in the website and um, I'm going to do a tutorial on the new fabrics as well so I'm going to be using this lovely fabrics so we need our fabric there's about six yard in here you need your measurement which is in the book and your ruler measurement tape fabric scissors and I also need some chalk I need some chalk and also a calculator if you need one to calculate the person's measurement or you could use your measurement tip for calculator all right guys i'm going to be showing you how i cut it out hi guys i quickly want to show you how to remove the label from the african print normally when you buy an african print it comes with a label like this to the clothes what i do is i use a hot steam iron you see the iron steam so what I do is I iron and press it on it for just a few seconds and then when you peel it, it comes off. Can you see that? I'll do the other one as well so you can see. So you just need a iron that is very steaming hot iron and you just press the label. Can you see what I'm doing? And then you peel it off. See? And it peels off. If it doesn't want to peel off, just repeat it with the iron again. And then it will come off nicely like what this one is doing now. If it's doing like this, all you need to do is just like stick it back on. Stick it back on. Put the iron on it again. Put the iron on it. And then peel it out from the side that it doesn't want to come off. You see? And then it will come off nicely. Alright guys, just wanted to show you that everyone so what I have done right now here what I've done is there's two fabric here one is for the back and one is for the front so the bottom part of the dress is gathers as you can see it's two fabric that's one that's another one the bottom part of the dress is gathers and it got a slit at the, at the front so what I've done is I have times our waist by two if you have enough fabric, you can times by three. You can multiply by three or you can multiply by four if you want the gathers to be a lot. If you don't want the gathers to be too much, you just multiply by two. So that's, and then I added five inches for sewing, zip, allowance, and all that. You can add more than five inches. You can add 10 inches. As long as you have enough fabric to use to make the dress. So I've cut it, I've separated the back. I cut them equally. So the back and the front is in here. So the first thing I want to do first, this is the lower part of the dress. The first thing I want to do is I want to remove the half length. The half length is 18, which is shoulder to waist. The shoulder to waist of the person is 18. So you have to uh, minus 18 from the overall length of the dress. The overall length of the dress is 48. So you can take your calculator or if you already know what it is, so that will be 48, take away 18, that is 30. So I'm going to mark from one end to where 30 ends, 
and then I'm going to add one inch sewing allowance at the bottom half an inch sewing allowance to the top so that will be 31 and a half so in total I'm adding one and a half inch to the bottom part of the dress which is the skirt so I'll take my measurement tape if I can find it okay so I take my measurement tape and I'm going to measure 31 and a half So this right here is 31 and a half. So I just mark it down and I mark it all the way down. 31 and a half. Okay, so I take a straight ruler, I just draw a straight line so I know where the mark is properly before I cut it. Okay, and I take my scissors and cut it. So practically, that's the bottom part of the dress. The only thing I'm going to do, the front section of the dress and the back, the back I'm going to divide it into two. So all I need to do is separate it. I just fold them into equal parts, the same thing, two into two. Into two. And then I'm going to cut it open. That will be the back. Because I'm going to be putting the zip at the back. So I'm just going to cut it open. I'm going to see if this part is up to 18. Then I can use it for the front. Well, I mean the top section, the bodies. But let me divide the back first into two. So I just fold, I fold the fabric into two. That's all I'm doing. Because I'm going to divide it into two. Hold it nicely so that they're equal. Okay, so they're equal now. So I'm just going to take my scissors and divide it. Okay, so that's the back. That's the back done. So for the front, the slit is going to be a flap, like flap over, because that's what the person wants. So what I mean by that is, instead of joining the slit, instead of joining the slit in the middle, I'm going to be lapping one end. I'm going to cut it anyway. I'm going to first of all determine where I want the slit to be, how wide I want the slit gathers to the other side, one part of the sleeve to be. So maybe somewhere around here. I'll just cut into here, all the way down. And then I will take this other part of the fabric. Once I've gathered it, take the other part and I'm going to lay it on top of this one like this. Because that's what the person want. She doesn't want the one that you sew straight down. So it's like flapping over. So let's assume in, I have cut the fabric into two. Let's say I've cut the fabric into two, I've gathered it. So I want this one here to lap on top of this one. Can you see? So when she walks, this one is practically like covering this one when she's not walking. But when she's walking, it opens. So that's this one on top of this one. So that's like lap over on top of it. So that's what I'm going to do with the front um, part of the dress. So I'm going to I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it out. I'm just trying to determine where how far I want it to be. Because I don't want it to be too small, then the gathers won't be enough on one side. So I need to determine if I want it. To be this much to be this much or if I want it a bit more I 
I think that's a bit too much. Okay, so maybe I will cut this mush. This is like about, this is like about, let me see, 19 inches. So I'm going to cut, in the front section, I'm going to cut it off 19, maybe 20 inches, I'll make it 20. So I can put a bit more gathers on this side. So I'm going to do maybe 20, and then I'll cut it all the way down, just like the way I cut the, just like the way I cut the, the back opened. And then I'm going to gather it. That's the bottom part where I'm going to hem. So I'm going to put the gathers on this one, put the gathers on this one, and then I'll lap it. I'll show you how I did it. But before then, let's cut the top section of the, of the dress. So I just want to check if this is going to be enough for the top. This is not going to be enough for the top section, but this will be okay for me to use for the sleeve. So I'm going to cut the top section. I'm going to use the lining to cut the top section first. Then I will use it as a template to cut the fabric. The top section is very much like a basic block pattern. It doesn't really have any fancy thing to it. It's the same. It's just your shoulders, your bust measurement, your waist measurement. So that's just about it. So I'm folding the fabric into two. I'm fold the fabric into two and I'm going to fold it again. If you see what I'm doing, so I'm folding the fabric again, which means I folded the fabric into four. So I folded the fabric into four. That's because I want to divide it so I can get it back and the front out of it. So I've, I've folded it into four. I'm just going to measure it quickly to see if it's up to 19. Okay, this is perfect, this is 22. So all I do is, I'm going to split it open in here like this. Okay, so I've done that. So the next thing I'm going to do I'm quickly just going to use the iron to press it so it's more lying flat. So I just use the iron to press it neatly. It's always good to iron the fabric out so it's not giving you the wrong measurement later on. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm going to put one and a half inches zip allowance on the bottom one that's the top one that's the bottom one for the back that's for the front it's a deep v-neck so i'm going to be putting one and a half inches zip allowance because i'm putting a zip at the back okay so now you need the pieces measurement so you know the accurate measurement and then of course we need our chalk now. So first thing first, you are going to take half of the person's measurement. You need to measure the person, if not you won't know. So that would be from the um, one shoulder to the other shoulder. So half of it. So in this case, this person's measurement is 16. So half of it is eight. So you just mark down eight. So from here, I'm going to be measuring the length of the ham hole. The length of the ham hole for this person is 10. So I'm going to be marking down 10. Or I could use 9 and I think it will be alright for her as well. 
so i'm just going to use nine because i don't want the ham hole to be too open and the dress is practically it's a cold shoulder dress it doesn't have a sleeve all the way to the top it got a very little sleeve so i think nine might just be all right even though i measured 10 because she was wearing a lot of clothing so i think nine will be all right because her bust is only 44. so instead of using 10 i'm using nine i don't want the armhole to be too opened so i've marked that nine that is the length of the armhole i'm just going to take my ruler and draw a straight line from the shoulder to meet the nine to meet the length of the armhole okay so i've drawn it i'm sure you can see it there so from here i'm going to be coming down by one inch that is for the shoulder slope okay so from this armhole length here i'm just going to draw a straight line okay so this is section here is the neck section so i'm going to be doing a v-neck i'm not sure if the back of the dress is a v-neck but i'm just thinking maybe i should do a v-neck at the back as well but not as low as the front so the front v-neck is 12 inches but you are not going to mark 12 inches you are going to be marking 11 and a half because you need half an inch to sew it so i'm going to be marking 11 and a half better still mark 11 so by the time you sew it at the shoulder and then you also sew it at the bottom here you should be able to get 12. so i'm just going to mark 11 For the back one, I'm not going to use 11. For the back one, I'm going to use a more shorter V. I'm not going to make it as long as the front one because I don't know how the back V. I don't know how the back neck look like. I don't know if it's a V or if it's a round neck. So I'm just going, the back one, I'm going to use eight. So by the time I finish sewing it, hopefully it will achieve between eight and a half, nine. So the wideness of the of the dress, I'm going to be using three and a half for the wideness. I got a picture of the style, but the picture is on my phone and I'm using my phone for this tutorial. So at the wideness of the dress, I've used three and a half for the wideness. So all you are going to do now is connect the one inch drop for shoulder slope to the three and a half mark here so i just take my ruler and i connect them together okay so from this point you are going to look for the midpoint of this ham hole length remember it was nine so the midpoint will be four and a half you can measure it so you can measure it four and a half will be somewhere here so from here I just take my ruler, your curve ruler, if you have one. If not, you can free, you can freehand it. What I do when I don't have this ruler, from this point here, I come up by one and a half. I come up by one and a half there, and then I freehand it. If you don't have the ruler, you just freehand it. And if you have the ruler, it's good, but you can see that you can freehand it. Just come up by one and a half inch here or you can take your ruler and just if you have your ruler you can use your ruler okay so i've used the ruler okay so now this part here is the chest line okay so we are now we are now going to put the bust measurement done but before that let's measure shoulder to the waist so the shoulder you measure from the very top not from the shoulder slope from the very top here you measure shoulder to waist shoulder to waist plus one inch that's 19. that one inch is sewing allowance on top here half an inch 
sewing allowance at the bottom there half an inch this is to join to the skirt so mark 19 normally i put a guideline of one inch here but i didn't do that today but it doesn't really matter sometimes i forget so from here to here i mark 19 one inch for sewing allowance you can mark, mark the 19 all the way so you know where the 19 is I take my ruler and I draw a straight line. Okay, so that's the waist. All this measurement here is going to be the waist. So I just mark one inch up so I know exactly where the waist is because it's 19, the waist is 18. I just mark one inch up just so I know that's where the exact the waist is okay so now the bust you take the bust measurement and you divide it by four you can use your calculator or use your measurement tape so we mark it down okay you can also mark down the person's um, bust point, which is the shoulder to the bust point. In this case, the person's shoulder to bust point um, is a 12. It's 12, so the bust point, the bust starts from there, but you still have to draw it to the armhole line. So you can mark the bust down there as well. okay so now we get we're going to mark down the waist measurement you can also mark down the shoulder to on the bust if you want although in this occasion it's not really necessary but you can do that just for a bit more fitting if the person really wants the dress to be more fitting and then the shoulder to the on the bust measurement and then also the round circumference of the Pesis on the bust, you can mark it down as well. Let me see if I have the person on the bust measurement. Trying to check if I got the person on the bust measurement. Yes, I do. So you divide the under bust measurement by four. So you mark it down. This is for if you want the dress to be really fitting on the underbust. If the person doesn't want the dress to be too fitting, you don't really need this underbust if you are not cutting a princess seam or a princess dart. This is just a normal dart I'm doing. Okay, so this is the person underbust. This is the person bust. And now I'm going to do the short uh, waist, waist measurement. So the waist measurement divided by four. And then you mark it down. Okay, so remember I haven't had any sewing allowance. So now I'm going to be adding sewing allowance. So on the waist here, because I'm putting a waist dart, I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be adding two and a half inch. On the underbust measurement, I can just add maybe one and a half inches. And then on the bust measurement, I had two inches. And then I'll connect it to the top here as well. So, so this is how the person measurement looks like. If you can see what I'm, uh -huh. this is how the person measurement. But you know, our waist is not pointing. We don't have a pointy body. So what I do is, I take the ruler. And I draw a, a nice curve. Can you see what I'm doing? I take the ruler, I draw a nice curve to meet the bust line. Let me move this so that you can see properly. So I just take my curve ruler. I draw a very nice curve, sort of a pointing. This is a pointing one. You don't want that. You want it to be nice curve. So I take the ruler and I draw a nice curve from the waist to meet the to meet the bust line so you can see I've drawn a nice curve here 
You can freehand it as well. Hope you can see the way I, I, sh I draw it in nicely. Okay. Okay, so for the V-neck, we are going to cut the back V-neck first. So all you need to do is to take your ruler. You take your ruler. I'm going to start with the back V-neck first. You can use your ruler anyhow if you're able to achieve it nicely. So you just take your ruler and draw a nice V-neck. I'm using the curve part of the ruler to get a nice V shape. Okay, so that's for the back. So I'm going to do the front one now. So I'm trying to draw a nice V neck for the front. Okay, so that's the front one. This is the back one here. I hope you guys can see it. Back, because I don't want the back V to be too low. The front one. The back front so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the back one first before I cut the front one just take your scissors and then I'm going to cut everything out okay so i've cut it out so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cut the the neck open so i'm going to cut the neck open now so i cut the back one first so now i cut the front one Okay, so I open it and show you. That's the front. That's the back. So I'll cut the back one opened because I'm going to be putting a zip in here. So that's the front one. It's much deeper than the back one. This is the back one on top of the front one. This is the front one here. So I'm going to cut here, I'm going to cut the back, not the front, the back, I'm going to cut it open for the zip allowance, because it got zip allowance. So that is the front one over there, this is the back one. I'm just going to cut it open. Okay, so I've cut it open into two. Remember, there's a one and a half inch zip allowance. So I've cut it into two. So this is the back. So the zip allowance, when I want to sew it, I'll just fold it in. One and a half inch. I fold it in. So I fold it in as well. And then the back will look like that. Because as I say, I don't want the back to be too low. I don't know how the back um, neck looks like on the picture that was sent to me. So I'm just giving her a V neck at the back as well. Okay, so I'm going to take this now to cut the fabric. So this we add as a template to cut the main fabric. And I'll come and show you how it looks like. Okay guys, so what I've done, as you can see, I've laid the lining on top of the fabric. So I'm using it as a pattern, or shall I say as a template, to cut the fabric. So the fabric is facing right side to right side, the inside. I don't know if you can see here. This is the right side of the fabric here. This is the wrong side. So I'm cutting it on the wrong side 
in case I mark it. So I'm going to cut it out. This is how you lay it on the folded edge. There's the folded edge, the front, folded edge, the back. I'm going to cut the back opened. The back can be any direction anyway because it's cut opened. But for the front, it needs to be on the folded edge. So I'm just going to cut it open. And then I'll show you how I cut the sleeve. It's a garter sleeve, I swear. It's a simple garter sleeve. So I don't think the sleeve need anything big to it. It's just a straight um, fabric. And then you just gather it. So I'm going to cut this out. And then hopefully I'm going to try and see if I can show you how I sew it. If I can, if I cannot, I'll take a picture of it and show you how it looks like. Okay, everyone, so I've cut it out. I've cut it out. Okay, so there's a quick tip I want to show you. This is the back of the bodice for the dress. The zip is going to go here. In order for the zip not to be too, not to be puckering, because sometimes when you sew a dress, the back sometimes tend to be like the zip is not lying flat the zip will, will bunch up like that in order to stop that from happening what i do is from this very top here i shorten it by you can do one inch you can do half an inch from this point here i shorten it or you can do um three quarter i don't know how they call it um half an inch or um just a little before you reach one inches so you can do half an inch or you can do one inch so you connect any of this line you just connect it to the original let me move this up a bit so you just connect it because sometimes the back is shorter than the front measurement so I'm going to do one half an inch. So I just connect it to the original, just like so. And then I cut it out. There's another method again. The next method is you can come in by half an inch. You can come in by half an inch like this. And then you take your ruler and you just connect it to the top here. You can do this method as well. So all you need to do is to cut here off. But I've already done this one. So instead of me doing this one, when I'm putting the dart, I make sure I hold the dart a bit more. And then that will make it flat. It will make it lie flat. Sometimes what I also do as well when I'm sewing, I make a longer dart rather than the normal average nine inch dart. I make the dart a bit more higher up. In that way, it gives the person a very nice fitting at the back of the dress. So that's just a quick tip. Just in case you are making a dress and the zip section keep bulging after you finish sewing the dress, all you need to do is just do what I did. Take away one half an inch or one inch from this point here cut it off or do this one here where you go in by half an inch cut it out and then sew the dart maybe make the dart a bit more longer that will make the back of the dress very nice and fitting so i'm going to take this to the sewing machine now. oh before i do that the sleeve as i was saying the sleeve is gathers it's a gather sleeve it's a cold shoulder dress so cold shoulder is it doesn't have a sleeve from the top of the sleeve here the sleeve only just start from here so it's a cold shoulder here of the person is opened so it's just a straight fabric it's a straight fabric and i'm just going to gather it and attach it to the opening there that's all i'm going to do that's all the sleeve is about okay so i'm going to take you to the sewing machine and see if i can show you how i sew it if not, I'll show you when I finish sewing it.